Anyone watching American Idol this season knows the bio for Jimmy Iovine. The music executive has worked with everyone from Bruce Springsteen to Lady Gaga. But his partnership with Dr. Dre is creating the most business buzz these days. The two teamed up for Beats by Dr. Dre, a company that started by making headphones for the digital music age. But they've quickly broadened their reach. Jimmy Iovine joins us now from our L.A. Bureau. Jilly, Jimmy, welcome to Bloomberg West. Thanks, uh, thanks for giving us the time. And, and you were an audio guy. Uh, you obviously started as an audio engineer, and you've always said if you didn't end up doing that, you'd probably be working down at the docks in your native Brooklyn. So you and Dr. Dre came up with this idea when iPods exploded to bring sound quality back to the whole music experience, and you've had this booming business which started with the headphones. What kind of numbers can you give us on how quickly this business has grown, and has it grown faster than you thought it would? Well, of course it's grown faster than we thought it would. Our, our main goal was to fix the disintegration of sound that was brought on by digital uh, technology in music. You know, TV, uh, HD TV visuals got better, in movies it got better, in music it got worse. Digital destroyed the sound of music, uh, according to most producers and record makers, and really, del and especially the delivery of music. So our, we just said, Dre and I just said, hey, you know, why don't we try to fix that ecosystem and go back to the actual file and to the consumer and uh, try to set it straight. The story of how this came to be is a great one, that Dr. Dre was approached with this idea of endorsing sneakers, and you said, Dre, speakers, not sneakers. But of course, we're not just talking about headphones. You guys that are broadening out this business, uh, cutting a deal with Chrysler for car speakers. Uh, we've also got you guys teaming up with HP for laptops. How many markets are you going to get into, and do, do you worry that maybe you get into too many markets too quickly? No, our mission is to fix the ecosystem of sound and get it closer to the, what the musician and the producer feel and hear in the studio. That's our mission. Well, on computers, 80% of the computers of the world are made like portable televisions regarding sound. So we, uh, our mission is to get, put pressure on those tech companies to fix those computers because their customers listen to music on those things. And it's no different than getting a George Harrison or a Beatles master and playing it through a portable television. So from that to the little earbuds that you get when you buy MP3 players, that's, there's two generations that only know that. And that has to be corrected. But Jimmy, I mean, look, uh, Corey Johnson in San Francisco, I would, I'm a musician, I'm a guitar player, jazz guitar player, right? I love it if people would really care about the quality of what they hear. But hasn't the success of digital music proven that people don't really care, that the average person doesn't care about the difference and they haven't heard it and they don't want to hear it? Well, no, that's the exact opposite thing we're feeling. Uh, I remember when my, uh, my, son's foot my son Jeremy's football team got some beats and they came on the bus and they said to him, can you ask your dad why the headphones sound so good? So what we're doing is we made them, we brought fashion to the headphone business and you put that with great sound and a great product and it has people at a younger age listening to better quality than they had been. For example, in headphones above a hundred dollars, the business has skyrocketed and it's mostly due to beats. And our business is now Above $100 in headphones, our business is 50% of the American market and headed that way around the world. It's, and so what has happened technologically to make that more possible now than in the past? Is there, is there, is there some design and sound? Is there a, a chip semiconductor thing? What's going on there? Because I've used the headphones and they're, they're shockingly good. They're also shockingly expensive. Well, they're, they're shockingly good, but they're not more money than an MP3 player. You know, how could you buy an MP3 play for $400 and then buy an uh, ear, earbud for $3 or $15? Your iPod is, or your MP3 player is only as good as the earbud or the headphone. So it's just, it's absurd to think that you can get $400 of sound out of a $2 headphone. Let's it's, go back, though, to the... not going to work. But, but when you guys started this business, you didn't start with the earbuds, but of course the headphones took off, they were so successful, it was a no-brainer move into earbuds. What makes these earbuds uh, better, let's say, than the Apple earbuds that are already out there? Well, first of all, 
you can only go below a certain price and get quality, the kind of quality that we want. All right, we're selling quality sound. And Dre and I and a bunch of producers that we work with spent two years tuning the first headphone. You see, most companies, most people with sound look at a song and see what it looks like on the graph and then they listen to it and they say this is the frequency response that we need. We don't do that. We listen to it. We, Dre knows what a record sounds like, exactly what it sounds like when he made it. I know, for example, Dan the Torpedoes from, by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers in 1980, exactly what that record sounds like. And until Dre and I and people like Timberland or Will I Am or Don Was agree that this is what it should sound like, they don't go out. Welcome back to Bloomberg West. I'm John Ehrlichman, in for Emily Chang. Jimmy Iovine is a busy guy, along with running Interscope, Geff, and a and Records, and building beats by Dr. Dre. He's playing a key role on this season of American Idol. Jimmy joins us again from our L.A. Bureau. As we said, Jimmy, you uh, have uh, been introduced to many new people through American Idol this year. It's getting down to the wire. We've got three people left. Uh, what do you think? Who's, who's going to take home the prize this year? I don't know. You know, I mean, we have two incredible girls in Lauren and Haley, and we have Scotty, which is a, he's a complete phenom, you know. So anything can happen. A lot has to do with the songs they pick, the deliverance of that night. Remember, this is not, a, a, this is not about records right now. This is about a contest. And it's very spontaneous, very emotional. So, you know, you have three really talented young people there, really talented. I think the, I think the best three finals the show's ever had. You know, we, we know the ratings are still very strong with American Idol, but what about the star, star making ability of the program? I mean, are we still seeing the kinds of sales for some of the artists that came out of that show in the first few seasons? Well, you know, the industry has changed from 10 years ago, so I think we're going to comparable. We'll see what we saw 10 years ago. I think we'll see now. Only you have to take into consideration what actually has happened to the industry, and there's been a massive decline due to piracy. Jimmy, I'm, I'm boycotting the finals since you took my boy Jacob off. I'm, I'm just, I'm upset about the whole thing. But let me ask you about the thing with the I industry. Love, I mean, yeah, I, look, I, I love Jacob. You know, I think Jacob, uh, Jacob's a great singer. I'm trying to get Kirk Franklin to work with him. Yeah, well, I'm a sucker for the whole uh, the Luther thing, too. But, but uh, you know, the way the industry has changed since the days, even Kirk Franklin, a, a niche, you know, uh, gospel singer has sort of crossed over. But in the days when, it, when a Luther Vandross could cross across all platforms, when a Dr. Dre can, uh, the number of sales are smaller, partially because of digital music. When you look at the future of the industry, what do you think is the hardest thing for the old music execs to understand? Look, we need subscription in music, period. Once we can get subscription on a massive scale, it'll be great for the people, uh, great for the consumer, great for the musician, great for the record companies. It'll be great for the entire food chain. But the, but the industry doesn't seem to embrace it. At least the consumer wants to go out and buy the, from iTunes, buy the tunes they want, not buy the tunes they don't want. Pandora maybe challenging that a little bit. I mean, what do you look at that excites you about the way the subscription business works in music? I think people want music on demand. I think they have all they, they want to be their own ZJ. They want music on demand. They want it when they want it, what they want, and they want it quick, and they want it good. So getting back to American Idol for a second, uh, for Universal, which of course you're a part of, which has the rights to these artists this year, is this a money-making opportunity? Is this going to be a big win for them to be backing American Idol or the artists through American Idol? Absolutely. It's a very, very big deal uh, for Universal. And personally, it was a great it was a great thing for us at Interscope. You know, we got to work with these artists early on, and, and there's some great artists. I think everybody will agree with that. There's some great talent on the show, and we put the right music and help them make their records properly. I think we, we're into some great stuff here. I, I, we were very very fortunate to get this. We, first, a lot of people didn't think it was going to be successful this year. It turned out to be so successful. You know, Jennifer Lopez, Steven Tyler, Randy are killing it. They they were great judges. They picked some great acts. And, you know, we jumped in there now with the producers at Interscope, with Tricky and, 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 and uh, Rodney Jerkins and Don yeah. Was and Ron Fair and Rock Mafia, all these people. And they did a great, great job. So we're developing some great artists here. Well, Jimmy, we really appreciate your time. Jimmy Iovine joining us. The guy doesn't sleep a lot between Idol and Interscope and Beats by Dr. Dre. We really appreciate it. Well, what I do is I put on my, I put, when I go home, I put on my beatbox, I turn it up to 10, and I sleep right through the night. There you go. Jimmy, thanks for the time. Jimmy joining us here on Bloomberg West.